Well, it's a gray sort of a day, overcast, about 10 degrees. We've already had one brief rain shower. I decided today would be a good day to transplant the brassicas into the vegetable garden. Um, I have savoy cabbage, Brussels sprouts, um, an Italian kale, and an Italian broccoli. So I plan to grow them under spun bonded row cover. So hopefully that will protect them from any early or late frost that we might get. Both of my uh, quince plants are in bloom now, to show you the difference. This one is a very pale orange, and I never see this particular variety in garden centers. A friend gave me a little rooted piece of it years ago, and I've never seen it anywhere else, but I, I kind of like it. And to show you the difference in the color, this is what I call the more traditional one anyway red, sort of a coral red one, the one that you see most often in people's gardens. The floating row cover comes in six foot widths, and I think my length of it is 25 feet. I only plan to use it on a couple of beds, so I've got more than enough. What I'm doing is stapling it down to the uh, raised bed frame on one side, just to anchor it, and the other three sides I'll weight down with stones when I'm finished. That's the floating row cover stapled down on one side and pushed out of the way. At least stapled down, it won't be able to blow away on me. Before I plant, I'm working a good amount of seafood compost into each one of the square foot cells. Only except for one cell, which was planted about a week ago, I think, with calendula. And there are a few starting to come up, so that's going to be a patch of flowers at the end. The rest of the bed will be full of the various members of the brassica family and because of the size of the plants when they're full grown you can only put one in each cell so it gives me 15 cells I guess here to work with. Well, that's, that's the compost all worked into the soil. Now I'm going to use my dibble to make all three or four inch deep holes to put each plant in. There's a row of Brussels sprouts all planted. I tried something a little different yesterday when I, or day before yesterday, I guess, when I was planting the tomatoes. I had difficulty getting them out of the cells. I had an idea that a dinner fork might work, and it did. I used the dinner fork to lift each plant out of its one square inch cell, and that way I got all the roots without damaging any. Well, that's one four-foot raised bed planted full of antioxidants, leafy green vegetables, full of vitamins and minerals and fiber, some of the healthiest plants that we eat. I planted four each of the cabbage, the Brussels sprouts, and the broccoli, and only three of the kale. There was only three spots left in the last row, but three large kale plants will provide an awful lot of kale, so I think that will be enough. There's the floating row cover floating. If anybody watching this video has used the stuff before, please leave a few comments. Uh, I'm not really certain how long I can leave it on there. I realize it's hotter under the cover, so when the weather gets really hot, I certainly will have to remove it. I want to leave it at least until the danger of frost is over. But I would also like to leave it long enough that the cabbage butterfly, the cabbage moth, doesn't get a chance to lay its eggs on the young plants and those lovely little green worms appear that eat everything. So if anybody's used row cover, please leave a few comments telling me what I should and shouldn't be doing here. I'm back in the grow bag greenhouse. I have a minimum maximum thermometer in here. I don't put too much stock in the maximum because that's probably when the sun was shining directly on it. And the actual room temperature wouldn't have been that high, but it was up to about 34 degrees Celsius at some point yesterday. But the thing that encourages me is that the minimum temperature overnight was only 10 degrees. The transplanted tomato plants are doing very well out here. I mean, no great growth yet. They've only been here two or three days, but they didn't slow down. They didn't wilt, nothing. They perked right up and seemed to be enjoying the, the greenhouse, so that part is working. To finish this video, I'm back in the wildflower garden for another look at the 
dog tooth violets just because a gray overcast now we've got a bit of fog day isn't the very best kind of day for photography the bright sunlight is far too harsh when you're photographing these sort of things